Well, hello, and I apologise for the terrible audio, but this appears to be how my microphone is working at the moment, so I can figure out why. And this is a quick introduction to the P47 Throttle Quadrant project that I'm undertaking at the moment. I'll stop moving this around and actually do something sensible. So, I've done a lot of research, collected all the data I possibly could, to actually reconstruct as accurately as possible a P47 throttle, which I'm starting to build it now. If I can just click on, ha. now, there we go. So here we go. You can see the internals of it there. So you can see the switch here in a lot more detail. We've got all the parts, central pins, there's a spring that goes in this cavity here. You've got two clips that hold this cap on with a pin through. This little switch goes in for your microphone button. This all rotates. That's a steel sleeve here that's basically pressed on this aluminium piece but I've just locked tied it on. It'd be a lot simpler. You've got a hollow this, this is quite a complicated part, this lever, not only is it bent, but it has plates on either side that are riveted on, a slot down the centre so it's all hollow, to then come to this part where the wires come through, and through various bits, out through here where there'll be a plug interface. This, I'll, I'll turn this view off, uh, I'll cancel that. We can look at some of this in detail. We'll look at this switch for a start. We'll just remove this cap. So let's just find this in the menu. There we go. So you can see how this works is you have these two brass contacts here and here. And then on the here, on this plastic, this is all plastic, this part. It was some kind of Bakelite. And uh, then you had a copper or brass ring, and when you push this down, it makes these two contacts, and that's your switch. And you slide it under the cap. If I turn the cap back on, you'll see it has a recess under here, and that holds the switch on until you flick it back, and it pops back up with the spring. And there's all sorts of various. Uh, insulated parts, so all these black parts are, are made of Bakelite insulators or some kind of plastic, so they will all be made of something like ABS today. There's a steel pin that's held in by the cap, that's insulated from these bits by these. There's um, a spring inside of that, and there's an insulated plate on the bottom here. You can see there's got two little slots in and holes to rivets to hold these plates on. It's, it's a very much of its familiar to me of its time. This cap, interesting, has no screws or anything. You can see there's these wire spring loaded, well, these spring clips with a pin through one either side and the cap just slots in a spigot and then you put these little clips in, they have a recess in the handle and they, um, and that's what holds this cap on. It's quite, I've machined this cap now, I've put photos up of that. It's quite a fiddly and thin part, it's very nice. So this part, the knurling doesn't come all the way down to here. I did do the knurling in 3D, this is just texture, but um, it just completely overloads the CAD so you can't keep it, but it comes down to about somewhere about there. Um, it's quite a complicated part, the handle, there's a little pin goes in here, if we, uh, let's see, the handle, there's various shims and bits, there's all sorts, of, let's find this bit, brush, if we get rid of that, so, see there's a slot in here, and there's a little peg that goes in here, and that limits the rotation of the handle, this is another part of the switch housing, and another insulated part there, which can be engraved, this part's another complicated bit, there's, there's several styles of this. One has a cutout that sort of goes round like that, which I could do, but you need more stock. They made this one was simpler. This is like the rationalised one to make it quicker and easier to make. 
Um, you've obviously got this part, this, uh, as you turn the handle there's a fixture here. So then just like the kind of uh, cable you get on your bicycle to work the brakes, there's um, a little round clamp that goes on there and then a little cable fitting that goes on there and that pulls the wire forwards and backwards and that works your gyroscopic gun sight range. So another little detailed feature here is you have these, there's a, I haven't got the spring drawn in, but there'd be a spring here. And uh, basically as you move the throttle up, these spring out and clip in so your <coughs> propeller speed and um, boost pressure automatically move as you move the throttle. Another detail which isn't easily seen because this is in the way. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, let's see the levers. Let's make this lever disappear. There we go. So you'll see there's a little catch here. That was originally silver soldered on, but I'm just going to get a thicker bit of aluminium and machine it straight in. And you'll see that catch pretty much lines up with the auto lean. So you had to push this lever over to actually get it past auto leans. You couldn't accidentally stall your engine out too easily. That was like a little um, little safety feature there. Some of them also had another one to stop you going past auto rich, but the later models didn't. Now this, if you look at this on most of the ones you'll see, which most of the pictures I could find were early ones, had a very complicated aluminium casting. But the only plans I could get were for this. Not exactly like this, this one has to be rationalised a bit more so I can weld down here and do a few other bits so it's actually makeable <laughs> without, you know, great big um, press tooling. But basically that's, this piece is exactly as it was and they basically made it into a bent tin thing. Which is a lot more ugly but it's a lot easier for me to make. This part, in fact I'll isolate this part, let's see, where's this part? We don't think you can see the menus recording in this mode, but if I click uh, isolate, this part's quite a complicated part to make. As you can see, these all free float on the spigot, on the tube, and then are held by the pin back here. So that's that's quite a complicated thing to set up and get machined. I haven't got the aluminium to do this yet, but that's going to be quite a fun part to do all the CNC for that will. So I'm looking forward to doing that. We'll, uh, we'll unisolate all. So some people have been saying about how this has, um, some of them had two adjuster knobs so you could adjust different levers differently. But I cannot find anything, any pictures or anything that shows these had anything like that. So if I go back to the section view, Hang on, I've lost a bit. Uh, analysis. There we go. There we go. So, this originally had a curved spring that went in here, but I can't get any curved springs like that, and I probably won't be able to cut them out very easily on a CNC machine, even with tungsten carbide tooling. You might do, and then bending the curve in a mid -season. I could maybe do it. But even getting the spring steel isn't very easy. So getting a conventional spring is a lot easier and that can go between this cup and push on this cup and then this is like a machined finger part if we isolate this. Where is that? It's under this. So I call it a pressure spider. Uh, in fact we'll isolate this assembly. We'll, uh, Turn off the analysis and we'll isolate this assembly. So you can see there's this pressure spider here. I can turn analysis back on. So that pushes. So all this hooks in the end of the end frame and this basically pushes the whole pack against it. So the pressure's spread across all of them. And you can turn this knob and wind the spring tighter or looser, basically. Should be a lock nut on the back there and uh, just a bit of static really. So it's a bit more complicated than as far as I can make out the original was, but it's more makeable from what I've got because I can't get anything for the springs. 
So this is just a tube, we've got six bits cut in the end. Uh, this could just be 3D printed. Or I could machine one out of plastic, it's not really an issue. This is just another metal piece just machined up. So that'll just be some lathe work. Um, an isolator, so we go back to that. You'll notice that uh, there are these these radius sections, I've been trying to make these, but I've had to get a long mill cone because I was trying to cut this one, but the mill flutes weren't long enough and it just clogged up and chewed and oh, it, it just it went horribly wrong. Anyway, so these parts, if we uh, let's find this, the radius section, we'll do this thick one because it's the nicest looking one. Uh, Let's look, 18 millimeter. So I've rationalized, a lot of the sizes because I can get metric stuff so much easier, I've rationalized down to a metric size. So for instance, this was three quarters originally, but you can do eight, well, it wasn't three quarters, it was some weird English size, not quite three quarters. So about a 30 second less or something, but it's about 18 millimeter. And these were originally, obviously, a, these were brass and they were probably just extruded an extruded part and then cut to length and they just painted these on they didn't engrave them which I'm going to do and then just fill them in with white paint afterwards I haven't got any black paint I've got white paint but I haven't got any black spray matte spray paint at the moment but we'll work on that but these bits can then all be cut out of a bit of aluminium plate they're originally brass I was going to make more of brass but it's very expensive and I just can't get any at the moment with the whole lockdown coronavirus thing so I've got aluminium laying around so they might as well be aluminium. They're painted so you'll never know any different and uh, if we uh, let's have an isolate it all and find the other bits. So either side of those between the levers you'll see uh, I've made them in brass let's see and they're just called Where is it? The menu. I've lost it now. Here we are. So if I just look at that one. Uh, there's these. Apart from the one with the little knob, these are just all identical along it. And these are what the levers actually run against. So if the spaces between are made of aluminium, it doesn't make any difference to how it, work, <coughs> how it works. It just need some one millimeter brass plate. Again, I chose made them one millimeter originally. Um, Oh, I can't remember the size, they were slightly not far off it, they're only something like five, six thousand difference or something. So it's not like um it's making a big difference that it's in material I can find. Uh, again these were eight but I've made them three mil, it's like five thousand difference and I can get three mil plate easily. Same for these, these were eight plate originally. Uh, the knobs can all just be 3D printed. Uh, the, one of the toughest parts of this is going to be bending all these parts because I'm going to have to make some kind of radius jigs and bending jigs to actually get the place where the bends start and finish correct for any of these parts as well as the angles. And it's very important if you look at these levers, they, they've got to fit pretty tight in all this and they're going to have to line up pretty much so I may have to bend them and then adjust some of these spaces to so they fit just right. This whole thing in itself, the throttle lever, will isolate that. This, you'll see it's quite a... I put actual rivets in it. <laughs> Didn't realise I got that. Obsessive. But, um... Too many things open here. Shut some of them down. So the central section, so we'll just remove this plate. You can see you've got, I'm going to put aluminium rivets in, but the throttle lever itself is actually two parts of the wires can come down here. It's got a big bit here so the wires can move around. If I make that plate come back, you'll see there's a slot and there's a little insulated tube that sits between that slot and the aluminium piece here where the wires come out to the plug because nowhere could I find where the wires came out and they don't appear to come out they appear to all travel internally so there must be something like this I did manage to find a picture of a smashed up one of these and I found that it didn't just come round to a straight up it had this big wide kind of taper so 
I'm assuming there must be some kind of gap in there for that. Anyway, I've put lots of rivets in. I don't know how many the original had, but had this kind of staggered pattern at the top, so I sort of copied that and stuck them in wherever I thought I should have them. They're, they're just going to be aluminium rivets, as they're, they're soft, you can just easily rivet them. And then this bit, this is 4mm plate, and this bit then has to be machined down to be thinner at the end, which will be fun. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though, um, but uh, it's quite a complicated because then all these holes have to line up with the bends in and everything else, so uh, luckily the CAD works all that out, so as long as you get your bends correct, all your holes should line up. <laughs> <laughs> that should be fun. Um, let's see... <clears throat> this part I've rationalised, the original one has a crazy angle on it, but that would be totally useless for a desktop one for me. I did try and make the original mount. I hadn't quite got it right. So this is my first attempt at doing the original mount. As you can see, it's got a sort of really weird angle on it, so it fit on the body. It didn't come out too bad, but it isn't quite right yet. But um, the rationalised one's just dead straight on, so it's a similar kind of thing, but looks like that. How, whether I'm just going to have that 3D printed or whether I try and machine it out of aluminium. The original was cast, it's a very fine cast, and you see how thin it is. It was cast, so we'll, we'll see. These plates are just one mil thick aluminium plates, these two, they're just cover plates. The structure is really this part, these frames, and then between them you have, you'll see these 516s rods, which I'm keeping 516s because it's quite easy to get 516s rod. And again, between each of these parts, between these spacers, you have these brass discs which I've called anti-rotation discs. Um, oh, there we go. This is a special one that's got the hole in for the wires. Um, most of them haven't and all the levers sit between these discs so they all rub on these brass plates, not the aluminium in between. So they stop all the rest of the mechanism turning against the uh, against the cylinder. The only bit which might change about this design, which I don't like, is this. It's basically free floating currently on here, so it can transmit the pressure. But it is fixed. There's little spaces here and here and here. The brass. And this is one of the spacers, and it's clamped up there. But it means this is clamped at the top, and then this is screwed to this, which could affect the pressure going through this, but it might be so flimsy and far from it, it doesn't make any difference. So there could, in theory, have been another spider on the back here, but I've not seen any evidence of that. And in the drawings, it just has a spacer, where you'd have to have another spider part like that pushing on here you're going to have this spring clamp it from both ends like that so I might try and see this how this goes when it's built and if it's okay it's okay there is no adjustment for these levers over this lever for the fact that this lever is longer than the others no account for that doesn't appear to be they didn't worry um, <clears throat> and that's about it getting all these bends right will be fun I don't know how I'm going to make these jigs yet to do it Tomorrow I'm going to try and cut this out as this making this part failed and I've got a long mill coming but it's going to take like a week or two weeks to turn up. So I've abandoned anything requiring deep milling at the moment and uh, I'm going for this part to cut out 3 mil steel. I've got some of the... Let's see if we can get loading up. So I haven't got the toolpath for this because yeah, this is the thing. This, there's uh, some features in um, Autodesk Inventor CAD I don't like. 
set up 10, so that was for this, um, that was for that, so you can see there's various tool paths to cut through that, and uh, there's tool paths for this, is this one, uh, no, that's the one to do that one, again, I, was, I couldn't make this, I've got the aluminium to make these plates, but I'm waiting on a, uh, on a um, 90 degree cutter. I've got fine, very fine angle engraving cutters, but how the engraving works in this program is it'll plunge the cutter down to the width of that. So if you use a pointy cutter, if it's only one mil plate, it'll go straight through it to make the cut as wide as that of the, on the V-bit. So you need like a, quite a, like a 90 degree one that's quite oblique so it doesn't go too deep and come through the plate. But um, I'm waiting on those cutters at the moment. I've got some 90 degree ones, but they're awful and they're all as wobbly as anything, so I'm waiting for some better ones. Uh, some of the tool paths for this. So this, various bits. This is one set, this was just to do the, that's the inside, that's the outside tool path. But I think I actually, there was the outside tool path, so that was abandoned. Because for some reason it wouldn't accept that, it wouldn't generate it, there's a few errors. Hmm. So we went with the second outside toolpath. Oh, this was for the jig actually. That was the jig's toolpath, and then I believe we went. So then we did another outside toolpath, which machined all this off. And again, I didn't use a rounded mill, I just used the square mill and did very, very fine cuts, which took a long time, but oh, it's a hobby, not. It's not in production. If I'd used a rounded mill, you might have got a slightly better finish, but a few minutes with some wet and dry on a lathe, spinning it, and it's a bit brass over, and it looks quite nice, and I don't want it to be perfect. I mean, that's the other thing, there's parts in here, so if I go down to the bottom here, so... There's the jig, so this was just, um, this part of the jig was, let me get this... No, but I'll turn the body off. That's, where is it? Ah, I don't the origins. There we go. So it's just a simple jig. The switch cap goes on. This locates it in the same way. So in put it in the CAD. Does it? And this bit basically got its machine the way you do it. Because I couldn't stop it machining all the way down. I couldn't find a way of doing it. I'm sure there is a way, but I. Uh, hadn't figured it out, so... <coughs> oh, where this was? What sketch is this? Components. Oh, yes, so I'm working on a sketch for a bending jig for those little brass brackets. Brackets, even. Oh. No, oh, it's not a cutting meant to pause a lot. <laughs> when you get to a complicated part. Ah, yes, thank you, Autodesk Inventor. There we go. So, I think that's covered most of it. This part, curiously, this just has little shims that went in here. So these slots were made a lot wider than the actual bit, and then had little shims here. I don't know why. I mean, I put them in because it had them, but I can't see why you wouldn't have just machined this so it fitted in relatively snugly. Unless they just were knocking them out so fast that they didn't machine this that accurately and so they had shims and you would shim it if it needed it or I, d I really don't know it just seems to make the make gripping it weaker but there we go that's that's what they did I can't really tell you why and all these parts will need little bending jigs made for them to be able to bend them around they're very tight bends for eighth steel so that's could be interesting whether you can do it cold or not whether you've got to heat it up to do it I'm not sure it'll be fun to find out should be noted that the prop propeller auto engage lever only engages going forwards going backwards it does not engage whereas the boost lever engages going both ways automatically and some of these have different have different add-on bits that I can't find any good pictures or drawings of so you could lock them open or closed and some of them 
it appears you couldn't lock them open and close. You can in aisle 2, even though they've got this design, but I don't believe you could with this design. There's an extra little thingy on here that lets you do it. But um, that's more complication than I've got anything drawn, well, any detailed things to go off on. So, anyway, that's where we are with it at the moment. Started production, we've got the cap made, we'll get this lever made, and hopefully get this radius arm made when the bits come. If my cutter comes, I can get these parts made, they won't take long at all. <coughs> and um, I've got some stock. I've got this, now the stock to make the handle. I would have used it for the cap because it was far too big, the stock I was using, but it's just what I had. But I've now got some stock come for this, so I can make the handle of the lathe. Oh, actually I can't because I need the knurling tool to come. So I've got a way to do that. And then it can be set up in the CNC and just have this little cutout put in where this other aluminium piece slots in. Again, you should be seeing there's a lock screw for that, but locks that in place. That's how that's done. And uh, we go from there. I've got some old iron lying around I can make a steel sleeve out of. And uh, yeah, so anyway, this is the P47 throttle project. And uh, well, we'll keep you updated as it goes.